Hello everyone. I am so grateful to have you back. Mama, Mama, M M Molly, Molly, the Mama Cat's down. She's sleeping. Her ch children are sort of napping and some are sucking on her, uh, on her, you know, getting, getting nourishment. Uh, everything's so quiet around here. I got Pockerville's cannon. I'm so glad to be with you. Thank you for coming for the seventh, seventh uh, of a series, seventh in the series of Take Ten with my father. I put my father because I want everyone to know that the universal father of all mankind is a, is a personal father. I want you to get to know him. I just had coffee with him uh, in the front room and there's a big picture of, of him above the uh, fireplace. He's so wonderful. He loves us and he wants to be with us. This, I, I, we're in the series where, 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 where he's talking <laughs> about the Old Testament, how he prepared for, for his son Jesus. He tried to go, go through the prophets. He tried to have Moses make a tent, and <coughs> a meeting tent, so, so, so he could dwell among them. His greatest desire, his one desire is to be known. By, by, uh, by, by his children, by his, us human creatures, to be known by his children, and to be loved by his children. And, and, and how do we be known and loved if we don't live with each other? We have to have presence. He wants to be present among us. That's why he had Moses build the tent with the Ark of the Covenant. There Moses talked to him face to face. He was the only prophet of the Old Testament that talked to God face to face. Yeah, he, he wanted, and, and, and not, and not just to Moses, but to, through Moses and through the prophets and through the patriarchs, he talked to his people. But they weren't listening most of the time. So he said, figured out to send his son Jesus. And that's where we are now in this series. They will listen to him, but he knew that they probably wouldn't. He knew everything. He knew the future. But he sent his son despite that. So we pick up our series from, from this wonderful book, our, our, The Father Speaks to His Children, from the approved revelations that he gave to Sister Eugenia, Mother Eugenia, uh, a very holy nun. And, and, and uh, we'll go talk more about her later. So let me pick it up now. He, uh, uh, he says, but how could I come among them? Because the prophets, Moses, the patriarchs, they weren't listening. They listened and then they forgot. They said, all you say at Mount Sinai, we will do them, Ten Commandments. But they started <coughs> doing other things, not God's will. Like us all, we are all very fallible, very inconsistent, very uh, sometimes not true to our word because we're weak. Anyway, <coughs> but how could I come among them? There was no other way than to come myself. He's going to come myself in the second person of my divinity. The second person is Jesus. Uh, well, Jesus didn't become Jesus yet. The Son of God, the, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He's going to come myself in the second person, the person that he loved the most. They love, they love the eternal romance. Father loved the father. Just had a, a conception of himself, an image of himself. It, it became another person, and it, and it was his son. And he looked look on his son. He loved him more than anything. And that love between the father and the son looked back to the father. Yeah, the father. He loved the father more than, and the son looked back to the father. And, and, they, and, and they loved each other. They were so in love that they became one God and three persons. The, the, the love between the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Blessed Trinity. So he's going to send this most treasured, loving, the one he loved the most. He's going to come in the person of, of, his, sec, of his Son Jesus, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. Would men, would men know me? He's asking us that. Would they listen to me? Nothing in the future was hidden from me, so he knew the answer to it. I myself answered these two questions. Would men know me? Would they listen to me? 
Uh, well, he knew the future, so he's answering the question. Listen to his answer. They will ignore my presence. Ignore my presence, even though they will be near me. In my son, they will treat me cruelly. In my son, they will treat me cruelly, notwithstanding all the good he will do for them. In my son, they will speak ill of me. They will crucify me to bring about my death. So the Father and the Son are one. So, so what you do to the Father, you do to the Son. They will, be, they will ignore me. They will crucify me. They will speak ill of me. He knew all this was going to happen. Yet he so loved the world, as like John 3.16 tells us, he so loved the world that those who believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. He still sent his Son, knowing the consequences, knowing what would happen. Shall I stop because of this, knowing that they're going to be cruel to me? They're going, they're going to do me to to assert his son to crucify him, to crucify him, to put him to death. Should I? So he's asking this question. Should, shall I stop because of this? No, for my love for my children, children, men is too great. No, I I'm going to send them anyway. My love for my children is too great. I did not stop there. Understand well, he says, that I loved you as if, as it were, more than my beloved son. Oh my goodness, that's pretty shocking. I loved you more than my beloved son, or rather, more than myself. He would let himself suffer, he would let his son suffer, more than, than, than stop loving us. That's what he meant. Isn't that something? What a God we have. What an eternal Father we have. I loved you more than my beloved son, who he loved the most. Oh my God, they were just loving each other. Holy Spirit, the love between the... The Holy Spirit has loved the love between the Father and Son. But he loved us more than his son. He said his son go there and go, go on the cross for love of us more than myself. Because he died on the cross too, because what you do to your son, his son... You do to, to him and the Holy Spirit. They're one God. Oh, what I am telling you is so true that if one of my creatures, listen to this, that if one of my creatures had been enough to atone for the sins of other men through a life and death similar to those of my son, I would have hesitated. Just another creature, not his son. If, if, if we could get that salvation done by, by another creature, by one of us, I would have hesitated. And he, and he says, why? Because I would have betrayed my love by making a beloved creature suffer. He didn't want a beloved creature. He loved them. He doesn't want to make us suffer. Rather than suffering myself in my son. Don't you see? Don't you see? He would never let another creature suffer as much if he could save the world. As much he loved us too much, he would betray. He doesn't want us to suffer. That's his whole love for us. He doesn't want us to suffer. I would never have wished my children to suffer. Do you see how much the Father loves us? Oh, think on that today. I am so grateful, so grateful that you come. Please continue to come and pray for me and, and say the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Oh, he loved the Father. And, and the apostles asked him, teach us how to pray. And this is the prayer he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, pray that with all your heart. Pray it with attention. Have a cup of coffee with the Father. Now sit with him and talk about the day or talk about what's going on. He loves you. He loves us more. He loves you more than his son, who he let suffer and die on the cross. He loves you more than himself, who, who suffered and died on the cross with his son, in union with his son. He loves you. He loves you. He wouldn't let you go through all this. Uh, he would rather have his son and himself go through it to save us and make us happy now on earth and forever in heaven. God bless you, everyone. Okay. Uh, may you all find out that the eternal father is my father your father my father he wants a personal and deep relation of a relation of trust a childlike trust in him that everything that happens is a grace 
from the Father. God bless you.